What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about today as we get into this tropical into this tropical stuff over here. We have now potential tropical cyclone nine that has just been tagged by the National Hurricane Center. We have tropical storm Franklin. We have Tropical Storm Gert, and we ha did have Tropical Storm Emily. It's now a post-tropical cyclone, and we have Invest 92L. So earlier this morning, we had three tropical storms all in the Atlantic Ocean. Now we just have now Emily's weak into a post-tropical cyclone, and we have Franklin and Gert, which are still kicking around. We have potential tropical cyclone nine that is rapidly organizing and developing as we speak. So we're going to be covering all of this. My two main concerns are PTC-9 and Tropical Storm Franklin, as they have the biggest threat to land right here. So we're going to go ahead and first talk about PTC-9, since that's in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's closer to uh, landfall than Franklin is. So here's the, our first public advisory issued by the NHC. Current winds are 30 miles per hour, 90% chance of development in the next 48 hours. Pressure is 1,008 millibars. Current location is 25 degrees north, 89.9 degrees west, moving at 16 miles per hour. It is expected to enter Texas in the next 48 hours. So depending on what it does with all the ingredients it has under its belt, it'll depend on what will happen. So that's the situation we have going on right here with PTC-9. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for Tex uh, for South Texas right here if we can pull up the cone we have tropical storm warnings I believe from uh, from Port Lavaca all the way down to Brownsville so this is a situation that we all need to take very seriously it's going to cause a pretty big flood threat as well so we all need to pay attention to that especially so now we're going to go ahead and show you tropical storm franklin it currently has 50 mile per hour winds pressure of a 999 millibars no change from yesterday so far however i've been keeping an eye on the satellite and i've been keeping an eye on some models and there is some indications that some potentially robust strengthening may be happening starting tonight so we're going to go ahead and start talking about this. We're going to give you the public advisory right here. Here's the situation. 50 miles per hour, tropical storm force winds extend out 60 miles from the center. Its current location is 15 degrees north, 70.1 degrees west. It is moving towards the west at a very slow pace at 6 miles per hour, and this slow westward motion is expected through this afternoon. A sharp turn to the north is expected early Tuesday, and landfall on Wednesday in the Dominican Republic is expected. Here is the cone right here. So this is something we absolutely need to pay attention to. It is expected to make landfall in the Dominican Republic near the border with Haiti with winds of 65 miles per hour right now. However, I've seen some indication that it may get stronger than that, and we'll show you those later in this video. So that's what we have going on with Tropical Storm Franklin. The biggest threat, in my opinion, is going to be the flood threat, as this is expected to bring multiple inches of rain in very mountainous areas. So I would certainly pay attention. But down the road, this is expected to strengthen into a hurricane in the open in Atlantic. Tropical storm watches are in effect for the Turks and Caicos and the northern half of the Dominican Republic. So everyone needs to pay attention on Hispaniola. Now we have Gert over here, which has 40 mile per hour winds. This formed unexpectedly last night, pressure of 1,006, moving at 8 miles per hour. It isn't expected to last long, and I'm surprised it's lasting as long as it is. So yeah, it's not moving very fast either. And that's really not that big of a threat to land as I'm talking about this, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. We have post-tropical cyclone Emily down to 35 miles per hour, and now we have Invest 92L, which is over the Cabo Verde Islands. It is now has a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days, minimum, uh, medium of, at 40% in the next 48 hours, so that's something we need to continue to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. We're going to go ahead and talk about what's working for and against all these systems right here. Easily working for it, global sea temperatures. Global sea temperatures across the area, especially with uh, PTC-9 going towards Texas, we have 30-plus degrees Celsius waters in the Gulf of Mexico. Plenty of water for this thing to be fueled. Plenty of water for this thing to intensify and potentially strengthen at a very robust pace as this approaches South Texas over here. Another thing that's easily working for both PTC-9 and Franklin is the ocean heat content. For potential tropical cyclone 9, it is currently on the loop current or just about to exit it and even so it's still going to be in areas of over 100 ohc until it approaches south texas over here until until it exits the gulf so 
plenty of plenty of fuel for this thing to develop, plenty of oh, depth, plenty of moisture uh, to really go, uh, make this thing go off. And with Tropical Storm Franklin, it is moving very slowly through decent ocean heat content, well over 100 OHC, a lot of OHC to really get this thing to intensify. And I feel like this is part of the reason why we're seeing the convection we have right here with Franklin. It's getting organized more and more by the hour. We have a huge burst of minus 80 plus cloud tops right here. That's indicative of a heavy precip situation right here, a situation where we have a lot of rain going on, but not too much wind yet. It's not translating to the surface, so we have to keep an eye on it. But as this continues to move west, it is going to be moving closer to the 150 OHC we have right here, potentially use that to its advantage as it turns towards the Dominican Republic and Haiti before it makes landfall. But either way, over 125 OHC all the way until landfall. So if this thing, this thing has the tools it needs to strengthen at a pretty decent pace. Now, if we go ahead and show you the wind shear, wind shear is not that bad, honestly. If you look at Franklin, the wind shear is to the north of the system right here. However, it's mainly... Uh, the only thing it's really doing is helping it intensify. It's helping it organize as it's producing a huge amount of outflow right here. So definitely something we need to monitor for sure right there. And for at least for now, this this whole shears business right here isn't really doing anything to Franklin. It's not lopsided. It's pretty even between the sides. So, so certainly some t potential rapid intensification may be possible down the road. We'll have to wait and see on that front. And for PTC9, there, the wind shear is not very much right here, so I don't really have too many issues with this. If this wants to strengthen at a pretty robust pace, maybe get up to 60, 65 miles per hour before it approaches Texas, I can certainly see that happening. It would just have to organize at a very fast pace if it wants to do that. So that's the big situation we have right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast through all this. Shear forecast for both of these systems, we're going out 24 hours. The shear for PTC-9 by the time that it gets there, it'll probably be the ne the next H name storm, Tropical Storm Herald. That's the next one, I believe. And so there's not going to be much wind shear stopping it. Not, same thing with Franklin over here. So we'll actually go ahead and also show you the, hum the moisture component. Both of these are in very good moisture pockets. There may be a little bit of dry air to the west of Franklin. However, considering basically how this thing looks on satellite, I don't think it's going to have too big of an issue fighting that off. So still something to pay attention to, but I don't see any big issues with this thing not developing right here. So as we continue to move on the next 72 hours as this as we continue on, as this thing approaches the Hispaniola right here, the wind shear actually pushes further to the north as this thing mo uh, moves on. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on for sure. And we're going to go ahead and lastly show you some hurricane, uh, some models we have for Tropical Storm Franklin as we have been seeing quite a few things going on. We have for the HMON about in the next 24 hours actually has the strengthening at a decent pace. And then by the time we, uh, we get into to tomorrow we're getting into 991 993 millibar territory that's indicative of hurricane strength if we take it by pressure alone and then we start seeing uh, winds at the surface around 64 to, uh, to 70 knots or about 80 miles per hour as this approaches the dominican republic gets up to 985 down to 985 millibars by the time it gets there and the winds get up uh, get up to around 80 to 90 knots uh, at 850, which is about a high-end Category 1 hurricane as this approaches the Dominican Republic. So this is something we absolutely need to monitor going forward. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, but we're closing the video out right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.